You are not only going to learn how to do a painting, you have a chance to actually win that painting at the end of the broadcast when it's done. Meet Jed Dorsey. Hey, Jed, what are you going to do today? Well, I am going to paint from start to finish, uh, painting right here on a black canvas, which is going to be super fun. And I'm going to give away this painting at the end of the time to one of the people who comments in this section. And uh, I'm going to show you some techniques on how to layer and do things that are, I'm going to be working in acrylic, but they're applicable to uh, oil for sure. And some of them, you know, are drawing from watercolor techniques as well. So really fun. Outstanding. Well, why don't we get started? Okay. Sounds good. All right. So okay. I'm going to be painting. I'm going to just put him on full screen now. Okay. So I, I'm, I'm going to be painting this scene. I, I live in... Uh, by the way, thanks, Eric. I, I'm kind of amazed at, at you. I was, I was, I, I feel like I want to ask you some questions while I'm here, but um, I'll tell a little bit about where I'm painting this from. So I, I live on Camino Island, Washington. So it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, a little island north of Seattle. Not, not too far, but a little ways north. And, um, you know, we're, we're known for rain in the Northwest. And one of the things that I wanted to do was really just kind of show that there's, there's a lot of beauty in the Northwest. And, um, this is kind of what I, what I look, look at in the summer, um, at one of the little beaches that's close by. And, um, but you know, Eric, I was thinking, you know, you, I was, I was kind of worried about you when you were doing live streams every day. I was, you know, cause I was like, man, wow, he's incredible in this. Um, you were worried about me. You thought I was going to keel over. Is that the deal? <laughs> I just thought how, yeah. Like I was, you know, how many days in a row did you actually do it? Cause I know you're doing it five days a week now, but. Well, I did, I did, uh, it's, this is day number 317. I did, I think, seven months in a row without stop. Oh. And, and then I went to uh, weekdays only, but I'm still doing yeah. seven days a in a row for the 3 p.m. broadcast. Oh, are you really? Wow. Well, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's amazing. And I'm, I'm super impressed with that. So I'm, I'm just basically what I'm doing is I'm just putting, I'm just doing my drawing, you know, like there's nothing really fancy about what I'm doing here, except I'm just using a red because sometimes it's nice to have a little sparkle behind um, the, the colors, you know, you're painting on a black canvas and um, you know, but you don't want it to be just a dull painting. Sometimes you can cheat a little bit and get, um, a little bit of color in your drawing underneath and and a lot of times when that shows through in the end um you know you have a little bit more to work with that's going to be interesting and you can cover it up of course if you want but that's why i'm using this this red here now can um, you tell us what kind of paints you're using what yeah. kind of canvas and what kind of brush because everybody always wants to know absolutely absolutely yeah so this is uh a centurion um linen panel these are these are great these are kind of my go-to um panels i really like them and what's funny is i i was mentioning to you right before we got on here i i feel like my mother-in-law who every time she has guests over she doesn't pull out her tried and true recipe she always goes with a new recipe and i always laugh at that because i think like why don't you go with something that you you know, you're used to. And, you know, you had Gil Dellinger, if I'm saying his name correctly, on the other day. And he mentioned something about um, his acrylic paints that he was using. And he said, these are um, Windsor Newton. And I was kind of intrigued by them because he said they're, they are um, kind of a new formula and they, they don't have any color shift. And yeah, this if is you're, the Windsor Newton Pro. Yeah, so this is the Windsor Newton Pro here. And I actually ordered them that day that I, I he was on, and he, he talked about that, um, or the day that I watched it and, and uh, got a rush ordered here. So this is my first time actually using these. Um, and and uh, 
you know, so that was what I was saying is that's my excuse if my painting doesn't turn out well. I can always okay. just say, well, it's my first. <laughs> and what do you normal? What do you normally use, Jed? Um, you know, a lot of times I use um, Utrecht right here. So this okay. is kind of they're they're nice, thick, heavy body um, paints. So that's kind of. Kind of what I go with. And the other thing that I'm doing that's a little bit different today is I'm using, um, I kind of switch up. A lot of times I have a different color right here. This this is usually in my palette, like 80% of the time in the last year, I'd say I've used a different color for my red um, that leans a little bit more towards violet. And um, I didn't really want to have violet as much in this painting, so I, I went with cadmium red there. Okay, so what red would it normally be? I normally use quinacridone red right. um, because it's. And the funny thing is, I found that names of paints don't matter that much. Uh, you know, like you can look up quinacridone red and look find it in one paint company, and it will be um, a different pigment than another company's, you know, the same name, Quinacridone Red. So I always find that I have to, you know, just make sure I'm actually buying the color that I that I want by looking at the, the pigment name. Yeah, they number. put the pigment number on the tubes. Yeah. <clears throat> so tell me um what what's what what's something that you've learned that you maybe weren't expecting from doing the live streams so frequently and and you know like i mean i know you have vast amount of uh contacts and you've you've done an awesome job in getting lots of people involved and stuff but is there anything that was surprising to you over those seven months and beyond well i think i think the thanks for asking the only thing uh jed is that um sometimes you you learn what you're made of right yeah. so I told myself I made a commitment. Yeah. Everybody needs a little little uh, emotional support during this time because it's pretty scary. Yeah. And I felt like I just needed to to do that. And I I committed to people. I said, I'll do it as long as we're in quarantine. And uh, I thought it was going to go two weeks. And, then, <laughs> oh, yeah. and, you know, now we are in it 317, almost a year later. And, wow. uh you know, I, I've had to, I had to give up a lot of other stuff to be able to do this because the preparation yeah. time on these things and the, the, you know, getting, getting people like you to do it and, and, you know, yeah. doing the research to figure it out, you know, takes some time. So, yeah. uh, I, I think it just, all it did is it helped me, um, help me understand what I'm capable of, uh, because, you know, I, if you'd uh, if you'd ask me at the beginning, would you do 300 <laughs> days in a row of this? I would have said no. I don't have the time. Yeah. And um, but it's it's been good, and it's, yeah. it's really been worthwhile doing. So I'm I'm very happy I did it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's. I mean, it is. I can totally understand what you're saying. I mean, you probably wouldn't have signed up for <laughs> made the commitment if you'd known exactly what it was. But sometimes that's how it works, right? You make a commitment. And you find out what it is, uh, you know, as you go. But, wow, I mean, it, it, I, I legit just say I'm super impressed because, I mean, I've thought about this kind of stuff. In fact, I'm thinking about doing something uh, myself that, you know, because I do live streaming, but I don't do it every day like, like you do. And um, I feel like. It, it's it's just something that I weigh pretty heavily because you know you it's such a commitment and I'm just really impressed that you've you know made that commitment but then also been able to do it because it's man that's a that's a good uh, good job. <laughs> so can you explain to us a little bit of thank you what what you're doing? Um, yeah, absolutely. And what's going through your head? Yeah, you so. So as I'm going, like basically my main thought is I'm, I'm working from on a black canvas and there's a, a couple reasons that I l like to work on a black canvas. I don't all the time, 
but sometimes I do. And one of the reasons I like to is because I feel like it's a metaphor for my life. And there was a time in my life when I was struggling with addiction and I had no hope. There was no color in my life. It was dark and depressing. And, and so there's kind of that part of it for me where I feel like in, in what my, my uh, experience was that God brought color and light into my life. So there's that part of it that's kind of like this existential, uh, you know, reason I like painting on black because it reminds me of where I've been and where I'm going. But the other part that I like about painting on black is that you control the light. And everything about a painting is about light, right? You know, I mean, um, where where's the the center of interest? Well, it's where you're, you're, you know, you usually have your strongest contrast between light and dark. And um, so when I paint on black, what I, I, I never would have done it by myself, but I took a workshop very early on um, when I was learning uh, from a guy named Mike Svob. He's a Canadian artist and he's, he's a really great guy, like super amazing teacher. And he just, every day of the workshop, he, he uh, had us paint on a different color or just kind of had a different approach to starting and, and doing a painting. And on the last day of the workshop, we painted on black. And I, you know, it was, it was one of those days that was beginner's luck. You know, like I'd been watching him all week and trying my best to emulate what he was doing. And, and uh, that last day, I felt like I, I really kind of had soaked in enough that I was able to do some stuff that was good. <laughs> and my painting, it actually turned out like, you know, I don't know if you've ever had that experience, but I feel like there are little gifts along the way that you get. It's like you, you overachieve for where you are in your painting career, you know, like, but it's like, whoa, how did that happen? And that's what happened to me that day was I, I painted this painting and it was way better than anything I'd ever done. And I thought, oh, like painting on black, it kind of made me think, oh, painting on black is really neat because look, I can do this. And it didn't always turn out like that after that, but it still kind of gave me this um, picture that it could be fun. But when I'm doing this, you know, like if it wasn't for the fact that I put on this red up there, and you just looked at this, you wouldn't have much to look at. You wouldn't really see that much about what I'm doing because there's so much that's dark in there still. And so when I paint on black, it really is a, a, a kind of an effort to, to work backwards. It's, it's um, and, and this is something that, that I can do here really easily. And this is what I was saying earlier about um, painting with acrylics is I can do so many like this is already dry here, right? So I can go on there and I'm going to mix colors and it's not going to, um, it's just going to cover it. And acrylics, they're, the, the reason I, there's several reasons I started working in acrylics. One being that I didn't have a studio and, you know, I didn't have space to have oils and keep them safe and keep them out of the way and all that kind of stuff. Um, but the other, um, reason was um well one of the reasons that i that i like them i because i my dad and my mom are artists also and um they they uh had always worked in watercolor when i was growing up and so that was kind of what i was used to but i'm a very spontaneous kind of person and i i'm not a very good planner i'm much better now than i used to be in terms of general life planning but but the, the part about art that was hard for me with watercolor was that I, if I made a mistake, I was kind of, I felt like I was stuck. There, were, there wasn't that many things that I could do to change it. And with acrylics, the thing that I love so much is that, I mean, I have the total freedom to experiment and try things and just, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. Well, let me just see. I'll just put down a brush stroke. You know, like, let, me ask a, let me ask you a question. So, uh, yeah. you know, one thing I would be curious about, first off, I assume you toned that canvas black yourself. You weren't, you didn't buy it black. 
No, I didn't buy it black. I have some black gesso uh, yeah. that I just toned it All with. Right. So the second question is over time, like let's say 100 years from now, I know oftentimes paintings darken and, and oftentimes if you paint over something that's dark, there's a famous painting, I think it's a Velasquez painting, that it's got an extra leg on the horse that's showing through over time. Oh, will really? That, will that black over time influence the painting and, and, and have that dark sink in and make the painting even darker? You know, that's a, that's a good question. And I can't, I can't speak, you know, from experience because I obviously, you know, acrylics were invented. Years old yet. <laughs> yeah. And acrylics aren't a hundred years old yet. So, um, but, but from what I know, I mean, this is the crazy thing about acrylics. Like, so if they were going into that museum and they were going to fix that painting that you were just mentioning, if they were going to do something, guess what paint they would use? They use acrylics because acrylics bind very well to things and acrylics. Well, there's, there's a few reasons one of them is just that they like to have a distinction between the original layer, which is you generally oil. But the other reason is that it is so versatile and you can do so many things and, and acrylic stays flexible. So it actually probably will outlast oils. You know, think about the problem of plastic in the world, right? Um, why do, uh, plastic bottles last forever well it's a it's basically it's a polymer and acrylic paint is a man-made it's a polymer and it's a problem with plastic bottles but if you're talking about artwork it's a really good thing right you want yeah. your painting to last a long time well, I, so. I, 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 it could it could be but the i guess if you wanted to take that same argument if you took acrylic house paint uh the colors can fade over time and so I think we should get yeah. an expert on some time to give us some information on it. I certainly don't don't want to uh, diminish it. I'm just curious about it. So I just want to well, mention well, everybody. So there is a big difference between acrylic house paint, though. You know that because the pigment in a artist quality uh, acrylic paint and a artist quality oil paint is the exact same pigment. So really, what happens with house paint is that you have a very uh, non-quality pigments and non, you know, it's not, it's not made at all in the same way. So there's a big difference between those things for sure. And that's why, you know, if you're thinking about, well, could I just use house paint? Well, no, not really. You know, it's, it's not the same. But anyways, you were going to, you were going to oh, say Oh, I was something. just going to mention to everybody who's tuned in that, uh, Jed Dorsey is our guest. He's going to give away the, the finished painting at the end of the show it, for the live uh, comments. And so make sure you're leaving comments. Also, I have giveaways. And so make sure you're leaving comments because we pull from the comments uh, for tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow's prize is make more money selling your art, my book. And also the winner of the plein air apron is Sharon Barley from Pennsylvania. So congratulations to Sharon. So uh, put a comment in and make sure that you say where you're from. That's helpful. Just so we see where people are tuning in from. And um, if you uh, get a chance, please go ahead and share this broadcast so other people can discover Jed. All right. Yeah. And uh, if Eric was saying, hey, if somebody wins your painting from uh, Norway or somewhere, are you okay shipping it? And yes, we are. We're, we're okay. If you're, if you're from somewhere across the world, we'll be okay shipping this painting to you. So make sure you comment and say something and we'll be happy to do that. And the other thing, Eric, I don't know if it's okay if I mention this real quick, but the other prize that we are going to give away is um, we did this miniature challenge, which is super fun. And I'm just showing you a few little paintings here that, that uh, are kind of part of the miniature challenge that we do. Um, and so that's another giveaway. Is it's actually 52 miniature lessons, um, which is uh, – really it's it's pretty pretty fun a lot of people are enjoying it right now so yeah so i should mention that jed has a business called acrylic university he teaches online uh and uh, the website is up on on the screen right now so you can go there and uh and check it out and uh, jed uh tell everybody how you and i first met yeah well we met up in in uh, cananaskis 
Well, I actually just went back and watched Marla, uh, her live stream with you, and that was where uh, you had met her too. Um, but yeah, I was up in Kananaskis at Fall Color Week. What was so cool about that year, Eric, and I've, I was actually looking yesterday on uh, the Fall Color Week and uh, also Paint Adirondacks because I still I want to come to Paint Adirondacks. Um, I want to come to both, but um, because it was so fun. I mean, that was just such a good experience and so fun. But yeah, I was up in up in Canada near Banff where we met boy that was i guess that was probably like three three years ago or well I tell, I've, I've lost track of time because of the coronavirus but i think yeah. it was probably about 10 years ago it feels like 900 <laughs> years ago <laughs> <laughs> yeah remember those days when we used to go do things yeah well we're gonna do them again this year we're doing fall color week in the adirondacks and we're doing the paint adirondacks the publisher's invitational in the spring so and and the and the reason is Jed that you know I have a I have a home up in the Adirondacks and I spend my summers, and yeah. and we have always had to come home uh, to get the kids into school in August. And our oh, kids yeah. went into college this year, so we were able to stay. And I experienced fall in the Adirondacks for the first time in thirty years, and I had forgotten oh, really? how stunningly beautiful it was. And oh, that's cool. uh, I, so I, I just spent, you know, I, I spent a few days in peak week just out painting and having a great time. And so this year we're going to do fall color week in the Adirondacks, which will be, and, and we also managed uh, to get a different place. So we do, we're going to do the spring one at Paul Smith's college and we're going to do the fall one at, <clears throat> at this kid's camp, which is a classic old um, Adirondack camp that was built in 1900 and it's a it's just a beautiful property on a beautiful lake with layers of mountains it's going to be really fun well that that I know that does look super awesome I was actually looking at that because it's it's Saranac Lake right it's near there yeah well oh yeah the, it's on it's on the Saranac Lake yes yeah and um you know I don't know if you know but I used to work for Young Life back um before I became a full-time artist, I actually worked for Young Life. And so I totally know it's a kid's camp, you know, but their kids, their camps are extremely nice and, um, and, and usually in very picturesque settings. So I can, oh, yeah. I can uh, imagine how beautiful that must be. Well, when I went over to look at the camp, uh, we had, we had rescheduled fall color or uh, the plant, the publisher's invitational because June of the virus. So we, we thought, Oh, it'll be over by July. Well, no, yeah, yeah. So we had rescheduled. We went over to the camp and looked at, uh, looked it over and it's just spectacular. So, yeah. uh, anyway, I said, well, could we do it there in the summer? And they said, no, cause we have kids here in the summer. Well, so we yeah. managed to get their very last open week. And the only reason it's open is because of the virus and, uh, they didn't, weren't wow. able to book it. So, we're we're lucky. It'll never happen there again. So that's really? going to be fall color week this year. Yeah. Well, I have a I have a beautiful painting that you did for me uh, in my office. Uh, I I admired it. You you had done a painting of another painter when we were all yeah. out painting in the snow in Canada. Yeah. And, and it was a kind of a very interesting perspective because the view was looking down on on the painter because you were yeah. up higher. And uh, at the end of the week, you gifted that painting to me and had everybody's signature on the back of it. So it's very meaningful to me. And that was very generous of you. Well, it was it was a fun. I felt like, you know, after I painted it, I was I, I just thought, you know, this this kind of it felt to me whether it did for other people. But the painting kind of signified what the week wa was because it was, you know, if you remember, there was snow that had fallen right before we got there. We weren't necessarily planning on it being snowy, but there was snow and, but it, it turned out to be such a beautiful kind of contrast between the, the color of the, the fall leaves and then the, 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 the white of the snow and, and that kind of thing. And, uh, and I remember I was up working on, on a, I was trying to figure out what to paint, actually. That was really what it stemmed from. I was wandering kind of in one of those places where I was like 
trying to figure out where do I, what, what am I supposed to be looking at right now? And um, I look down from this little bridge because I don't know if you remember, Gene Constanza was there and he was painting on the bridge and he was painting some something. So I was walking over towards him and I, I just happened to look down and my roommate, who, whose name is John Mix, he was, he was, um, he was down painting down below. And I, I, I just thought, wow, that perspective is really interesting. And you can kind of see the snow and the rocks and, and all this stuff around him. And I, the thing that made me hesitate with it was because I was like, this is a really, this is going to be kind of challenging because, you know, it's, it's like I'm looking down at this guy who's painting and, you know, but I thought, well, might as well just try it, right? Because sometimes you just have to, you know, you just kind of, with, with art, I feel like so much is about, just stepping out and trying something, you know, like you kind of have to overcome a little bit of fear every time you encounter your canvas. <laughs> and uh, so I'm glad that you enjoyed it. It was fun and it was meaningful the whole week. And so I'm glad that, that you are able to have that as a keepsake. Cause yeah, it means a lot to me. I, I, I will tell you that I thought what was interesting is, you know, here you are standing in a place where you have a, a, an incredible mountain range in front of you and some of the most beautiful scenery I've ever seen in my life. You know, ma it made Yosemite look small. And, <laughs> yeah. and you know, yet you chose to, to paint a, a painting of another painter painting. And, and uh, I think that's good because, you know, we, we kind of sometimes feel bound to this idea that we, we went all the way across the world and we went to this beautiful spot and, but, you know, sometimes you're just not inspired to paint that. you got to find something else. So, But you feel a little obligated. It's like, wow, I spent all this money to come here. I should paint this. <laughs> so yeah. I thought, that, I thought that was nice. Well, there's there's a lot of, um, you know, I don't know if you're familiar with the artist Sergei Bongart. He's oh, a yeah, sure. yeah. Russian artist um, or Ukrainian maybe or something. But, yeah, it's Russian. Um, he He would, like, if you look at his art, he very rarely painted big, grand, majestic scenes. He would almost always paint kind of ordinary scenes and things that were, I, I remember reading in his book, somebody saying, yeah, we, we drove, we were, it was kind of the same situation. We drove and we went to this place and, you know, we're all looking out and I start painting, you know, the mountains that are there and I turn around and I see Sergey. he's, he's turned around not even facing the mountains and he's painting this little bush or something like that. And, um, I feel like for me, sometimes it's, it's not about whether or not I, I'm, I'm, you know, I mean, that was very awe inspiring, right? Like being in Banff and Kananaskis. I mean, it's, it's the kind of place that you can't help but feel small when you're there. Right. Because it's like, everything is so grand and but the the other part of it for me is that i feel almost sometimes like there's an intimidation to try to paint something that big on a tiny eight by ten canvas you know and so i because i remember one of the days everybody was lined up facing out and i so i ended up lining up and facing out too and and I just remember thinking that exact thought. I'm like, how can I capture these mountains that are like, sheesh, however tall and however big and however vast and grand. And how can I, how can I put that, get the, anything even close to the feeling of what I'm looking at on my little eight by 10 canvas. And it just felt totally, that's why I think why I, I might, go, I'm, you know what, I'm just going to enjoy that. And I'm going to turn around, I'm going to paint something that I feel like I might be able to capture. So tell Not us what you're thinking now. What, 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 what's going on okay, in your yeah. head? Yeah. So like, um, you know, I said earlier, you know, that I'm, I'm working my way from dark to light, you know, I, I just now put on a first coat back there in the sky. So I'm, I'm kind of getting, getting the base of colors down. But when I'm working in acrylics, 
like what I, I'm thinking is I'm doing it in layers. I'm kind of just like working my way. And I know that this is dark because I can see that dark coming through. Right. And like you were saying earlier, you know, I mean, that needs to be covered if I want that light to show up. So I know just from working in this medium longer that I know that it's going to take me two or three coats to get it to be as light as I want it to be. And for somebody who might be used to painting in oil or something, because I, I do believe that oil gives you the opportunity to have a little bit thicker paint and cover that with your initial brush stroke. And I mean, I can definitely put on thicker paint. I'm not working very thick right now, but, but I also use it as an opportunity to think about um, the layering that I can do and, and how that will affect the way that it looks in the end. So you'll see eventually um, how some of these layers I'm going to leave showing through. Some of them I'll cover up. And um, in general, like where I cover them up, often I don't cover all of it up. So there will be parts that will be kind of like a transitional area between one color one one part of the painting and the other and I kind of do it that way so that there is a softening of the edges and and stuff because you know when you're working with different mediums work differently right and and so you're always going to be you know but you're trying to accomplish some of the same things like when you paint in oil you have a, a longer time to create a softer edge right so you can put stuff down and you can go back an hour or two later and you can rub your you know finger over it or you could take your brush and and you could smooth something out or do something like that with what i'm doing i don't have as long to do that so i have to figure out other ways to create softer edges um or i need to smudge it right away or do something immediately um but one of the techniques that I've found that I can use is what I was just saying about like layering things. And um, so again, different medium, it affords different things. It calls for different things. Um, but you can, you're still working for the same effect because you want, you don't want your whole painting to have hard edges. You don't want, you know, everything to be shouting out at you. You want your eye to be led through your painting and to your point of interest. And so um, that's kind of what I'm thinking through now. And gradations like this, you know, just kind of getting a little bit of the color to be deeper, darker down here. Um, and this is, like I said, this is a a little place called English Boom on Camano Island here. And um, they, Camano Islands, you know, I, I lived in Indianapolis for a while. I've never lived any, anywhere further east, but I've always lived on the West Coast. And one thing about the West Coast is that it's relatively new, right? I mean, the history here isn't as long. You don't have um, hundreds of years of you know, settlement, it, it, there's an extra couple hundred years on the East Coast, you know. Um, so, but this is an old part of Camano Island where one of the things that it was, a lot of the, you know, history of it was logging. And um, so there were a lot of these places that were set up as ports and things like that. So you have like all these old pilings and different things. I'm not actually sure completely what this exact beach was used as but a lot of the area had logging and uh, they would have these big places um, where where you know the ships would come in and they would take the lumber from the northwest and they'd bring it all around the world so in fact at one point this little little part of Camano Island had they say that it was a bigger that it was bigger than Seattle <laughs> so who knows things yeah, have gone Island, when people are asking where it is it's outside of Seattle it is north of Seattle about an hour 
Yeah, it's it's a uh, there's a bigger island called Whidbey Island that kind of surrounds it. It's like a uh, and then we're just inside of that. But yeah, it's kind of. I lived in Vancouver, BC for ten years. My wife is Canadian, and and you know I don't know Eric, but I I was telling Allie the other day that because uh, I know that she had or you had another. I'm trying to think the other. You had another acrylic artist on a couple days ago. And she was from South Africa originally, right? Uh huh. Yeah. And um, I was just, I was just commenting to Ali because I feel like, in my experience, there's, there, there are more people in other countries, like more professional artists who who might paint in like landscapes, um, who work in acrylic in other countries, and I feel like there's there's quite a few less in, in the states. And well, I don't know exactly. from our readers, if you, if you're uh, someone who paints in acrylic either all the time or some of the time, just put uh, in the comments right now that what you do. So we'll, we'll get a, we'll get a read on it. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. yeah. I'd love to, love to see that. Also, I should mention to everybody, if you just tuned in that we're going to give away Jed's painting during the live broadcast, we also, and, and we're going to pick from the comments. And we also um, are going to be giving away some other prizes uh, for tomorrow. And he's going to give away a, 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 a class at Acrylic University as well. All right. Okay, let's see what's happening here in the comments. See, what, see if we get them. Okay. Acrylics, oil and acrylics, acrylics, acrylics. Oil, acrylics and oil, um, acrylics, sometimes acrylics, acrylics and watercolor, acrylics, switched to acrylics four years ago, acrylic and oil, water media and acrylics, acrylics, a lot of acrylics. I use gold, yeah, I golden open acrylics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Um, acrylics and oil, good. Getting a lot of you, a lot of comments. Thank you for that. That, by the way, is going to benefit you because you, you if you have comments uh, in there, they more might more land chance. on you. <laughs> yeah, but uh, inadvertently, it's good to make random comments throughout the broadcast. If you if you know how this works, <laughs> just keep commenting and you increase your chances of winning. <laughs> the more you enter, the more you can win, right? <laughs> yeah, that's kind of funny. <laughs> but it's true. It's true. If you tuned in just now, our guest is Jed Dorsey, um, and he's got he's got a training um, company called Acrylic University. Uh, you can visit it's acrylicuniversity.com, and today he's going to be giving away uh, a course, but also he's going to be giving away this painting, and we're going to do it live towards the end of the broadcast. Uh, right close to the top of the hour. So hang around with us if you possibly can. Sorry to the folks watching the replay. Sometimes it pays to be live, but those of you watching the replay, we have prizes. Uh, today's prize is uh, my book, Make More Money Selling Your Art. And that book uh, will be given away tomorrow. We'll announce we'll pick a prize winner tonight after all the replays. So you'll get a chance to uh, to do that. All right. Very fun. You've probably given away a lot of stuff over this period of time. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I again, it's kind of like I thought I was going to do it for two weeks and I was giving, <laughs> a, giving something away every, I've given away tens of thousands of dollars worth of stuff. Yeah. But it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Nobody was, you know, buying a lot of stuff during coronavirus. It was just sitting there collecting dust. So, yeah. No, I think we've ha actually had pretty good sales during coronavirus. Surprisingly, yeah. um, do you have a read on what's happening this year with uh, plein air events? Are are there many plein air events happening that you yeah. that you're aware of? Yeah, you know, because plein air events are outdoors, a lot of people are going ahead and having them. Obviously, they're yeah. following safety protocols, but yeah. there's been quite a few this year already, and and a lot of them are going forward. And of course, people are counting on things getting better. Uh, 
soon. And uh, yeah. we are holding we are holding the plein air convention. Um, what we don't know yet is if they will restrict the attendance. You know, for instance, if they make a socially distance in the auditoriums, then you know maybe instead of a thousand people, we can only have five hundred. That's why we want people to get booked now because they're they get in early. Uh, they have a better chance of being in that group. And, um, of course, if people book and then we have to cancel or they can't make it because of coronavirus, there's a 100% refund policy. But, I, you know, we're, we're planning on moving forward. We're, um, you know, I have a trip to Russia. I have yeah. a, a trip to Berlin and Vienna for art collectors. And oh, wow. uh, so lots going on. So I, yeah. I think, you know, we're planning on it. And whether or not, we'll just have to kind of wait and see. Yeah, so you decided to lighten your mountains. Tell us what your thinking was. Well, you know, um, I, I, I'm actually looking. I, I just adjusted this camera a little bit, too, because I was trying to see what it looked like and the difference. Sometimes, like, if the camera's not set up exactly right, um, it looks a little different. But I'm not exactly trying to lighten them um, too much. It just is part of it is like the color is probably pretty close to what I put down the first time, but it's part of it is just that it's covering that black a second time. Mm -hmm. And, and so it's lightening it by virtue of that. But I'm also kind of, whenever I put something down, I'm always looking at it. I'm always evaluating it. And right now it looks too light, but part of the reason it looks too light might be because the sky is not um, as light as it's going to be. And so I, I learned about relationships. Yeah. It's all about relationships. Right. And so, um, you know, I got this from John Poon. I don't know if anybody out there is taking a workshop from John Poon, but he's a, he's a great, he's a great instructor. I learned so much from him. And, um, and one of the things that I got from him was just how he was, he was such a, um, he was such a generous instructor like he he cared so much about everybody the first day of the workshop um and he's got a workshop coming up at scottsdale um artist school in march and if anybody wants to go to that i'd highly recommend it because it's 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 really good and but one of the things that i just i was like really blown away with that the the first day of the workshop this was a couple of years ago i was there and um he he, he sat down, he just, we, we were all kind of in there milling around and then he ha had us all sit down in a semicircle and he just asked everybody, what do you want to, what do you, what are you hoping to get out of this? And he took notes. He sat there with his notebook open and he took notes on what everybody was hoping to get out of it. And he adjusted his plans accordingly. Like it was and, and then when he went around to talk to people throughout the week, he knew what people were hoping to get. And he was doing his best to make sure that they got what they were hoping for. And yeah. uh, anyways, but I got this idea from him. He kind of had um, the stages of the, the painting process. And I think I heard you talk to him about it, too, um, where it goes from. Well, I added one to it because he he starts with, I think he starts with draw and then he goes to block in and then refine and then, um, um, finish. And he kind of br broke it down for himself in, in a way that, that he could, he would have, uh, just kind of a, a way to evaluate each, each part of the painting. And I, all I did was I added to that, design because i feel like design is the first yeah. step and the maybe the most important step in my mind is like do you have an idea of a design and you know that but but um when 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 um when i'm thinking about um what was i gonna say about that i honestly i don't We're talking about design it's one of the first steps, one of the most important steps. Yeah, well, design is definitely the most, I mean, in my, my opinion, like if you, you can have really good brushwork and really nice colors and really good stuff, but if your design isn't nice, then your painting is still going to be mediocre. But if you have relatively, 
you know, average all the other stuff, you know, brushwork, colors are just kind of ho-hum, but you know, I mean, it's why, why does a black and white photograph work? There's no color in it at all, but if it's got a really dynamic de design, the contrast of the lights and the darks, you know, you're drawn to it and it's not about the color. And um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like that part of it is, is very important. And, uh, but there was something I was going to say, I think about what I learned about, about those stages from him. You know, you're but too I, young for your, your brain to stop working like that. I know. Things like uh, that happened to me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. It's, it's kind of sad sometimes when I think about that, but that's why I don't think about it too often. No, you can't. You can't think about it. This, these things happen. I probably just d distracted you somehow. Uh, no. Our guest today is Jed Dorsey. If you're just tuning in, he's going to be giving away this painting at the end of the show. Hang in there. Um, uh, talk about your brushes. Yeah. Um, yeah, these are Princeton Catalyst uh, brushes. And actually, another thing I can thank you for, because I was introduced to these at the PACE conference uh, a couple years ago in Plenary San Francisco. PACE, Pace stands what? for Plein Air Convention and Expo, everybody. Yeah. And um, I was walking around and I had my, you know, instructor badge on or whatever it was. And I didn't know how awesome it would be to have that on because I was walking up by one of the booths and it was, I, I believe it was a Princeton brush booth. I, I'm quite it positive or maybe they were sharing yeah. it with somebody else, but, um, and I was looking at some brushes and the guy said, Hey, do you want to try these? And I said, well, sure. <laughs> and he goes, yeah, go ahead, try them. You know, you can have these. And I took them and I'd never been that, um, I never cared that much about brushes, but after I used them, I, I thought, wow, these actually, you know, these were significantly better than what I was using before. And one of the reasons is that they have, they have this, uh, it's called a poly tip bristle. And basically the way I describe it is like, it's like a split end in hair, you know, like you have, uh, you know, these little bristles that at the very end of them, they, they, they split apart. And so, but it's just at the very end. But what that does is it keeps the, the integrity of the brushes. It's still really uh, firm. Like it's got enough firmness to push paint around and, and do fun stuff with the paint, but it also is very soft because it's kind of got that end that's, um, you know, split. And, and so anyways, I, I like them a lot for that reason. Yeah, and, they're I, great brushes and they're great people too. Nice people. They're, they're really passionate about art and artists. Yeah. Yeah. It's been neat. Cause we actually, I, we, we, we've partnered with them some more. I'm actually going to do some, do some little videos showing off some of their other brushes here in a couple of weeks, but yeah, they're, they're, they're great. <laughs> it's really funny how things work too, because I was in a, some random kind of Facebook group and I was asking for help with something and I showed them my website and I had a, somebody reach out to me and they said, Oh, you know, I'm, just kind of curious. I, I like your work and I'd love to see if you want to represent us. And she said, I, I work for Princeton. <laughs> and I said, really? I said, I'm not a person who's fake. I, I it would be hard for me to, uh, you know, really advertise for something that I wasn't passionate about. <laughs> but I said, I actually really love your brushes and I would be delighted to, you know, be a spokesperson for them and, and just kind of talk about why, why nice. I love them. Nice. Yeah. Well, Jed, we're going to come up here in, uh, it's about 10 minutes till the hour and we're going to have yeah. to, we, we need a little time to, uh, give the painting away and give, Absolutely. give away the lesson. So I'm going to give you a couple more minutes and then, uh, you can finish it later and post a yeah. picture in the comments. Yeah. But, we want to make sure we have time to do the giveaway because we'll, yeah, uh, some, sounds good. some platforms will cut us off otherwise. Gotcha. I hope you guys are enjoying this today. 
I like this statement. Doug Greenman says, I have plein air on my brain all the time. Yeah, me too. It's been on my brain, <laughs> on my brain for the last 20 years, all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Doug is, Doug is one of the, he's, he's a, he's a star um, with us at Acrylic University. He's, he's a really great guy and, and really cool. He never, at least from what he says, I mean, sometimes I don't know if I believe him or not. He said he'd never painted really before, but you should see some of the stuff he's doing. Um, it's really, it's really fun to see people grow and try new things and, and, you know, really kind of thrive. Um, so he's, he's one of those, but that's the thing is a lot of, a lot of, a lot of people, um, really are interested in getting outside, right? You know, they, yeah. well, they need I, to come to the plein air convention because it'll change their life. You'll you, because you, it's where you become connected to the tribe at the highest possible level, you know, yeah. get to meet people and have lunch with them and paint with them, hang out at night. It's really a lot of fun. It is. All right. So if you uh, just tell us what, what things you would have to do to finish this painting, because I know you're kind of running out yeah. of time. I am running out of time. Um, well, you know, so for, for where I'm at, like a lot of this is going to come down to looking and looking at the values. There's, there's some nice clouds up here in the sky and, and there's some, there's some differentiation in this landmass back there. So those are actually other islands and things like that. Um, but so I would probably, I'm probably going to come in and do a little bit of that, you know, make some variation in these hills back here. And I'm going to begin looking at, um, I'm going to probably reduce some of these posts a little bit to have a little bit more differentiation between those in size and things like that. Um, and, and then I'm going to kind of stand back and I'm going to look at the whole thing. And like I said, like some of the colors and some of the stuff that you're seeing right now are slightly different than what I'm looking at. Uh, it's pretty close, but um, that's what I'm really going to do is I'm just going to evaluate it and look at it. You can see like I always end up with paint on my hands from smudging stuff, but, um, but I'm going to just like look at it and evaluate and, and kind of, you know, that last step of the design or the, the process that John Poon taught me was, is, you know, finish. And he said, you know, a lot of times you go from drawing, you block it in, then you refine things you start you know and that's what i'm kind of doing right now as i'm trying to bring shape and value you know like form to to what's going on and then the last step is finish and a lot of times you need to step away from your painting for a bit of time you know sometimes after i think it's mike hernandez who says like you have about 45 minutes of concentrated effort that your brain's good for and after that maybe you start losing a little bit and so sometimes i find like I just need to step away, come back, look at it again. And there's going to be some stuff that will stand out to me, like, and I might not notice it. Maybe I go, oh, that bright red little orange spot, that's too much. You know, I need to get rid of that. So evaluate and then make uh, intentional brush strokes. <laughs> that's how I'm going to finish. Well, why don't you come back on screen? Uh, thumbs up and applause. Everybody give uh, Jed... Thumbs up and applause. Beautiful work. Uh, Jed, hey, nice job today. So, so, so uh, the way we're going to do the giveaway is what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip through the comments. I'm going to go all the way down to the last comment. Okay. And uh, people get them in real quick. And then I'm just going to flip through. So which? why don't we start with the uh, the other prize, the, the, okay. the prize of the Acrylic University. Yeah. Okay, so to explain what that prize is. Okay, so the miniature painting challenge is, it's, it's actually, the idea behind it is to encourage you to paint and just to get you in a regular habit. So every week for 52 weeks, you're going to get delivered a lesson. Uh, I mean, you'll log in or whatever to our site, but you'll have a new lesson every week and it's going to be a very simple miniature little painting that's doable. Um, and so that's what that, that it's the miniature painting challenge and we're going to give one of those away. That's going to be a very helpful thing. Okay. Ready? And now here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get, I'm going to say, 
uh, when I go, and then you just say stop, and wherever my okay. cursor is, ready, go. Stop. <laughs> okay. See? That, was quick. Is, that one, is one of those last people. Last she'll the be winner first. is Melissa B. Uh, we don't know who you are, Melissa B., but uh, uh, you're going to have to reach out to uh, me in the in the comments or reach out to Jed and uh, make sure so we can send that to you. And so uh, Melissa B. is going to win okay. the prize. Thank you. Well, All right. Now, <clears throat> the next prize, I'm going to go down to the bottom again. Okay. We'll get, this one go a little longer. That's why I'm going right. to let it roll. All right. Go. Here we go. Ready? This is to win the painting. Okay. And stop now. Maggie Hernandez. Maggie Hernandez. Okay. Wow. Now, if if uh, you guys work this out right, Maggie Hernandez is in Saudi Arabia, but, oh, wow. but she's in uh, America as we speak. Uh, she's She got stuck here because of uh, the airlines. And so... Uh, Maggie, you're going to have to communicate, and uh, we'll make sure that you get that, and you get that yeah. way you can send it to wherever you're going to be in in America. For sure, and if it's helpful, they can find me on Facebook and just message me there if there if there's a confusion about how to reach me directly, or if you have a way to get me their contact information, that's wonderful. Okay, so you guys reach out to either me or to Jed, and we'll connect you. Jed is at Acrylic University. You can go to his website. I'm sure you can do the contact us there. Uh, it's at acrylicuniversity.com. And uh, so you can you can just go there and, and uh, contact him and or contact me and we'll put you guys in touch. Jed, you were fabulous today. Thank you for, for being on today. Uh, congratulations. Acrylic University, I know, is thriving and uh, you're a good teacher. So Good job. Thanks a lot, Eric. I, I really appreciate being here and, and good job you too. I, I again I'm you're a hero of mine. Your resilience through this pandemic is amazing. So thanks for all that you do.